Hello, sorry about that. We kind of have it sorted out, maybe. We're gonna give it a test here. Um, we're scrappy. We're scrappy, we'll so let me out. know if we you can this. hear them or if they need to be bumped up. They're gonna sound like they're a little bit further away from the mic, but that's what we've got to work with right now. We're gonna enunciate, Hello. so if we sound like announcers. <laughs> we can talk loud. Please right. forgive us, I just spat all over the screen. Oh, I think we fixed God. it. <laughs> Hold on. Like we well, listen, if you if you spat all over the screen and I messed up everything, I think we're in a pretty good spot, right? I feel like I'm ahead of the game right now. Everyone's to blame. <laughs> Everyone's to blame. We were just introducing Josh and Sarah, uh, part of our recruiting team, and they're here to hang out, play some games, raise some money for the chibs, Woo. while also talking about... What do you guys think? Like, the, the, the interview process, it's the job in posting, yep. yeah, like... You know, I really thought we were going to be talking about blowing bubbles with bubble gum today. But Do you want to? I guess we can talk about can recruiting. Can we talk about old yo-yo tricks? I would like to <laughs> walk the dog. Okay, okay. How about let's start with recruiting, and then maybe we can talk about uh, Josh's dog later. I mean, because I have a lot of notes about recruiting, but not as that much about gum and yo-yo. Well. as interesting as blowing bubbles with bubble gum. Oh, did someone just get kidnapped? Yes. That's, not one um, of us, don't worry. Vernon, I think. You really don't know the Ninja Turtles. I, I, we're just, I just didn't watch it. That's okay. Then we weren't here to test you on that. We were here to talk about getting jobs and stuff. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, or things that people can do to, to maybe get a job. Yeah, increase their chances, right? To help get some some insight into the process. I've discovered the jump attack. Yeah. So do you think that the very first part of the job comes with the posting of it and then like actually interpreting what that is and not just applying because it says one thing you're qualified for? Yeah, I mean, we have been on the trend of trying to not have like a ridiculous set of requirements, but there still are some base requirements that you should meet. In fact, we have a requirements plus a nice to have section. Yeah, and keep in mind, um, requirements are like, the ideal person is gonna have all the requirements. We don't anticipate everyone who applies to have every single thing. Like, if you've got half of the things that are listed on the requirements list, that's a super good start. You know? Okay. Uh, we've also kind of, I think, gotten rid of most of like the years of experience thing, because you know, years of experience is good as a general guiding point, mm -hmm. uh, but doesn't always necessarily indicate that you're the best at something or the worst at something, so. Yeah. So you mentioned years of experience, and that's a good point because I feel like a lot of things are like, oh, this is an entry level thing. Do you have the five years of experience with it? Or yeah. they're looking for someone to do that, but you need experience, but then how do I get experience for said job? So, yeah, we, we definitely aware of the trends and the memes, uh, you know, about how difficult it is to actually land your first job and whatnot, but we truly do have associate postings, intern level postings right now, our internship is open, for example. Mm -hmm. And for folks that are like, well, how do I stand out as an intern? Um, you can do stuff non-professionally and include that on your resume if it's related to the, the job at hand. Yeah. Uh, people often ask, like, well, I want to get into games. How do I start if I don't have a games degree? You don't have to have a games degree. In fact, most people in the industry from ages ago didn't have one. They just made games. There wasn't games programs yeah, there or was degrees. No games program. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Even just like a, as much as like a decade ago, maybe. Uh, so those are pretty recent. I mean, you just there's tons of opportunities online, like Discord, Reddit, and I'm sure other things that I'm not super tuned into right now. <laughs> Oh, we got a donation. <laughs> that, was, that was a noise. Uh, I thought that was see. the game. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was the game. Yeah. Uh, see Through donated $15. Uh, thank you, See Through. Let's hear some voices. So I've got a few I choose from, but what would be your silly voices? I or mean, maybe I should just do it so you guys can keep the inf good informational part. <laughs> I, I started being a DM for the first time this year. Okay. And it was, you know, Lost Minds of Vendelver, like the basic intro campaign. I didn't practice voices at all, so every single goblin they ran into was just Mickey Mouse. <laughs> so I can just kind of talk like this. Like, okay, I like for it. Five minutes. <laughs> I like it. Okay, you're on the clock. All right. Um, I mean, what kind of silly voice are we talking here? Because my go-to is a DM I found. Is it southern? <laughs> southern. I could just do a real good southern accent, nice little drawl for the whole time if we'd like. Is that implying that a southern that, that, voice that's is That's what silly I'm saying. Though? It just doesn't feel silly, but it is a little accent. So I'll, I'll let Come Chris on be now, judge on this one. Let's... Oh, who can do Arnold? I can't do Arnold. Arnold? I certainly can't do that. Uh, let's like Arnold see. Schwarzenegger. 
Oh, oh, more silly voices. All right, so we're all on silly voices. Uh, I'll try to do Arnold. It's gonna be really bad. I'm not I feel like. All right, for oh, here's the. Let's do a rule of thumb. When we go to silly voices, we're gonna we're gonna pause the informative part of the conversation. I think that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, what is Arnold Schwarzenegger? Get in the chop! No, nope. chopper, <laughs> chopper. That got, that got real like that British got, there for a second. Real bad. Uh, Get British the Arnold. <laughs> Get in the chopper! I can't do Arnold. Uh, it's okay, we're not here to do. I, that was the request. We're not perfect uh, impersonations. Yeah, I Arnold, mean, I can do a real good move on. I feel like I've lost the movie. Oh, like, this. I got something from like switch up the voice. Oh my I god, can god. Can I do a stitch? I love doing a stitch voice. I'll do a stitch. I'll do a stitch nope. voice. I'm trying to make it feel dirty. This is not really bad. Family. 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 Oh, family means no one gets left behind. Like oh, oh, I got some. Oh I'm no. Not really sure I'm I'm game a you know, I don't know what we're doing here, but this is the voice I'm going with because I don't got an Arnold. I'm sorry, see through. <laughs> I'm doing my best. A few moments later. We were talking about the, um, yeah, the experience and how taking some of that off and you're more just looking for the qualifications. Like not oh, yeah, necessarily so. saying like you need X amount of years experience, right? Yeah. Yes. And also to just, yeah, make make games. Or, you know, I know people are asking about like the QA internship, for example. And they're like, well, how do you get QA experience? There's honestly tons of indie games slash like early access games and you can just... I'm in with them and join part of their moderation team and join the QA piece of the world. Mm -hmm. just helps, like, provide player QA. I mean, you could do what Glenn did as well. Glenn was playing games and writing bug reports and, like, sending them in. Yeah. Like, yeah. so you could play a game that you love, and if you find something, reproduce it, you know, submit the bug report, and try to be as detailed as possible, and continually do that, and then you've, you know, you're starting to build up some experience in QA right there. One thing that I tell a lot of people when I talk about like resume creation and experience and stuff is mm -hmm. that there's often a lot of experience that you have in your life that kind of crosses over that's not like paid job experience. And that is really important to like emphasize on your resume. Where, like if you've worked in a restaurant for the last six years, but you spend every Saturday night working on an indie game that you're making on your own, like list that part first. If you're trying mm -hmm. to get into games, like your experience working in a restaurant is not going to have a lot of crossover, but if you show that you're like passionate about making games and that you've been working on that, and like you can list that, it doesn't have to be paid job experience to be able to like put on your resume if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. It's a good thing too though because I feel like when I was first trying to get in, I was like, well, I don't have like game experience, and it was like. They don't want to hear about the time I worked at the grocery store, do they? Exactly. And I've, I've seen people apply with resumes that are entirely unrelated. Mm -hmm. And especially for larger companies, the, the less related your resume is, the less likely it's going to be that you look at more of the application, just because of the volume of applications to get through. Yeah. So that's a good thing to just kind of move on to, right, is resumes, because sure. yeah. there's, how many do you think you go through, like, how many do you think you've gotten so far for these internship positions? Oh, Ooh, we're, we're, we're closing in on, like, 5,000, I think. Okay, and it's only been open for a month. Yeah, and, and there's only four other, positions. Yeah, there's only four positions. <laughs> so what we're trying to illustrate here is that the better you have your information organized and stuff like that, they're going to pay attention to it because they're going through yeah. 5,000 resumes. So what are some things over 5, that... Uh, <laughs> uh, what are some things that you like? You look for in a good resume or do's and don'ts, kind of? Uh, I mean, I think the easiest one to go over is to just make it a spotless resume, right? I mean, it's our first impression of you. Um, when I mean spotless, I mean like typos grammatical errors, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. It can be very easy, especially for a position that we've talked about QA already. The QA team's job is to identify issues with our game and find really niche bugs and solve them. So if you have typos anywhere, that team is not going to want to speak with you, for example. Because it's so detail-oriented. Yeah. And then if you, you couldn't kind of put that on something you're trying to sell yourself, you, like that, that error could come through in, in your work. And that, I mean, not necessarily that it would, but that's the perception, right? Yeah, because you're, you're really, this is your chance to be seen by us. Um, and it frankly is the first and only impression we're going to have of you unless we've met you somewhere else before this. So, you know, be your best, right? Um, and I think uh, another thing is people these days use a lot of templates for their resumes, which is great. Mm -hmm. 
Having a designed resume is totally fine. We work in a creative industry. Just don't over design it. Okay. We've seen points where like people just you can't even get any information out of it because they have so many graphics or something like that on it. Yeah, it's definitely more important that you have save that for your portfolio. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm about to die. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about resumes. Oh, overly designed. Overly designed um, resumes. Yeah. Yeah. So just don't don't go too crazy. Yeah. And also, if you're like applying to a design role, and it just looks kind of messy. Like maybe think about using a template and not customizing it fully. Yeah. We definitely care more about readability than having like the most outlandish looking thing. Are there some things that maybe people used to include in resumes that they don't need to anymore? Uh, yeah, honestly, a lot of like if you speak with like your parents or millennial recruiters about these things, it's like you know they include your ad address and like did, all that jazz. Did, you don't really need to anymore. Did yeah, you, you just like say that like millennials are old, Josh? Yeah, yeah, I mean I we're both millennials. So. Oh, you are too. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. All right, we're good then. Uh, yeah, we can we can talk crap about ourselves. Crap about okay, yeah. All right, yeah, cool. That's like my own. Job. You guys want to get some avocado toast later? Oh, yeah, I had oh. avocado toast <laughs> literally no yesterday. House, no <laughs> house. <laughs> okay, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, like location limit is... personal information. Ooh. Yeah. Like it's... if you feel like you need to put a, a location, just like a city is fine, if anything, but you definitely don't need to put your whole address or anything. We're kind of moving generally as a recruitment department, not just us, but like, it's not the industry of recruiting, but recruiters Eat the trying pizza. to be no. less bias, like as minimal bias as possible. So. Nice steering job. away from including personal information that's not super necessary can be helpful. Because you never know what bias, unconscious bias, unless mm -hmm. people are actively being like, well, this person's from <laughs> Santa Ana? Heck no. <laughs> oh, like that. Yeah, I no. Mean... People from Santa Ana. Oh my god. But yeah, no, it's just like the, the trend is to try to be uh, as. Same thing with like your photo. Impersonal. Don't oh, put yeah. your photo on it. Don't put a photo on it. Like, we really don't need to do that. Um, you, looks are subjective as well and you yes. never know what small like inkling this person might glean from you know your picture yeah and and when possible i will say like for our part oh i think i'm dead dead when when oh possible, yeah you're in a tough spot oh god i don't know how i'm gonna get to you <laughs> we're gonna do it um no we're when, not you're dead when sorry possible, oh, sorry. <laughs> quickly we we do try to oh. like no oh. <laughs> don't i just respawn anyway yeah you yeah. will <laughs> uh we do try to Back. blind resumes when when we can but um, it does save us a lot of time and mm -hmm. effort for doing that if there's not much needed to be blind. Anyways. Hey, Sarah, what's blinding a resume mean? A blinding oh. a resume. Well, let me tell you. That's when you take a resume and you re remove any and all personal identifying information. So that when is the weak point on this boss? Sorry. Oh, oh dude, these I are old know. games. You don't get those. I think you just have to survive. No, we just got to beat a meter up. You just got to. He's, oh, okay. he's tough. Well, like, I, I can't hit him without being hit. Um, <laughs> Am I just really bad at this game? Probably. So yeah, it's it's you you're removing up. the name, and if somebody put a photo, it's taking off the photo. Um, oftentimes, we'll also blind where we remove information about like when you went to college, if you went to college, um, anything that could be considered within like a protected class. I'm very bad at the game. <laughs> Blinding a resume is basically. Oh. oh no, we've all died. We're back is a uh, hiding and removing that information to limit un unintentional bias okay um, when reviewing it with the resume usually comes a cover letter as well yeah love a cover letter we actually do i know there's like a lot of uh josh what's your hot take on a cover letter yeah josh let's talk i cover letters. actually read cover letters particularly for junior positions i think the more senior you are in your department or discipline the less you need a cover letter, just because... Think about just your graduating class, for example. If they're all aiming for a role in our internship, we can only take one. How are you going to distinguish yourself when all your classmates have very similar experience, probably the same group projects? You get a cover letter to talk about, you know, yourself. So, mm -hmm. I always like to say just don't duplicate information from your resume into your cover letter, because yeah. like, we already have a resume. So. Yeah. Use it as a way to fill in either extra detail from the resume, or as a way to like explain like why this job. You know, you can personalize your, your application a little bit within the cover letter, where 
we can we can definitely tell if you've just like copy and pasted the same exact cover letter. Oftentimes we'll actually have people who apply and they forget to change the company, uh, the company name. It'll say like to in exile, and we're like, mm, you're so close. <laughs> oh, that's gotta be embarrassing. So but, and like that kind of thing, it's not. It's yeah. by no means like an instant like no. oh skip this person, yeah. but it is we like just like human. we definitely get it. But it's also like if your cover letter is not adding anything to the application then it's not really worth adding in. Is your cover letter a good chance to put in some personal flair? Like, not yeah. like your life story, but just like maybe why you, for example, for working here, right? Like, why I love these games yes. or how they impacted me and like then drove me to like start working in games. Yeah, like, I, we love a template. You know, we use templates sure. all the time. We're not judging you for using a template at all, but maybe include one to two sentences about like why you applied here. And we also understand your likely shotgun blasting yeah. applications to like every game studio out there. Mm -hmm. I will but say just take a second, you know? This is my personal preference. I'm not gonna speak on Josh's behalf even for this. Like we agree on both things. I actually don't know what your opinion is on this. But I would prefer if someone were gonna put a cover letter, I would rather it was like literally two sentences of like Oh, Obsidian has been my dream location to work at. I hit, I love the games that you guys make, and you know, I, I just really want to work there. Like, I would rather read that than read through the copy and pasted like three paragraphs of like, I'm applying for this job. Mm -hmm. So within this job, here's why I want to do it. And it's just like the, for me, I really like when I just get kind of get to hear somebody's voice within their cover letter. Um, but that's definitely a personal preference. I don't mind either way, because again, I know what school is telling you to do and everything. Yes, so 100%. I don't need to discredit that. It's also, you know, if you're a good writer, like, show it off, right? Yeah. For sure. So, and again, emphasizing that, like, I would never. Sarah hates everything. <laughs> I would never look at someone's cover letter that they clearly, like, put time and effort into and be like, that's not my favorite kind of cover letter. Skip. Yeah, no. I would never do something it's, like It's that. always supplemental. A cover letter will never be the reason that we like mm, blatantly, yeah. I mean, unless you're like just spouting off <laughs> offensive things yeah. in the If cover anything, letter. it can only enhance your chances, yeah. kind of. So yeah. we're not gonna be like, it, it's also a, I know people are like, why waste time doing a cover letter if the, like, the recruiter's not gonna read it anyway, but if you, on the off chance, get a recruiter that does read it, like me, for example, and you're stacked up against your friend that didn't write one, and you wrote one. I'm more inclined to, you know, know I, that means I know more about you already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's kind of a why not thing. And again, feel free to use a template. Just add one or two clarifying things. Yeah, I mean, if you're not, not everybody is a designer. Not everybody knows how to lay things out. Like, templates are fine to get started. So let's say, all right, we've 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 got a good cover letter, good resume, and we uh, you, you've taken some interest in us. And we get a, our first call. What are some like, because in the initial call you're just kind of, what are you trying to do in your initial call, I guess? The initial call is usually kind of a culture, like behavioral. It's very rarely going to be a technical interview on the first round. Because mm -hmm. frankly, I'm likely not qualified enough to give you a The first a call you're technical. talking with Josh. Yeah, you're talking with That's me. That's really what it is. As much as I like know about games programming, I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of it with you. You know, that's the hiring team. They're going to be the ones that kind of grill you a little bit more on like programming languages and part of you done. I'm going to be more about like, why do you oh, want to no. work here? What's important to you at the place that you work at? Uh, you know, how did you get into games? What made you decide to be oh, in this no. position as opposed to another one? Mm -hmm. um, and oh no! A Thanks lot of times, we'll, like I think I don't know if people still use this, like the star behavioral recruiting. Um, look it up. I forgot to actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's star though, uh, but ba basically behavioral and like you know wanting to ask you to provide examples as opposed to like just just describing yourself, mm -hmm. right? And saying like I'm detail oriented. And I'll be like cool. Like, can you provide time that you know your detail yeah, orientedness like, was a boon to your group project? How do you? How do you? Um, so speaking of that, because there are, uh, to be fair, and I, I don't think that we do this specifically. I think we're doing a good job of asking unique questions. But how do you tell people to uh, navigate situations where they are asking like the same question? You've said this answer so many times where you feel like it's just the generic answer everyone hears. Like, you know, give an example where you worked well on a team. You know, and they're like, it, it feels not like 
not not fully genuine, I guess. Yeah, Even though it is like situational. Yeah, it's disingenuous. Thank you. I think it's just it, it's inevitable. Like we get it. Like mm -hmm. I get recruiting fatigue sometimes. If I'm you know speaking, I'll ask the same questions like all day and feel bad about like oh no, it's probably not an exciting question to ask. I do try to tailor the questions to the conversation, mm -hmm. and obviously I'll have a couple prepared ones. I, I think. There, there is a point where it's like very scripted sounding, and I don't know how to help you navigate that besides like, just, it's just do part your best of the... to stay engaged. Mm -hmm. It's just part of it, really. Yeah. Because, um, you know, people do prepare for interviews. Yeah. Uh, so, and I, don't, I, I think it's a great thing. I feel like a, a really good example of what to expect from a first call is like, hey, here's exactly what this job is. Here's what we're looking for. Does that fit what you're looking for? It's kind of like a, it's kind of like just, Checking to make sure that we're all on the same page for like as much as. Would, in, in shorthand, would you say it's like a vibe check? Yeah, yeah it's, a it's vibe absolutely. Check. Uh, one thing that I was told you shouldn't do that I did, I think, for my first interview or something, I might have said something to the effect of, I will probably do anything to work there. Like, I will mop the floors, <laughs> clean the trash. Like, that's how much I want to get into the, the industry. Why yeah. is that not a great idea, guys? I think it was more okay back in the day when game dev was just starting and you know it was just a bunch of folks working together I trying to get also, a product out. It depends a lot on the delivery of that. Like yeah. you can show that you're excited to be a part of something without sounding like desperate to be mm -hmm. a part of something. Um, and like that excitement is important. But someone who's like, oh, I'll take any job that gets me in the door with game dev. It's like, okay, but you're applying to our job. And the yeah. specific team as yeah. well. So when you say that, it really also sounds like you don't care about what you're doing necessarily, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So we still want someone that's excited for the specific position at hand. And you know, we get it. Inter I've been there too. We were all fresh to these jobs before too. So we internally understand that, yeah, I, I, would, I wouldn't do anything. Like, yeah. I'll scrub the floors, but don't, just don't come up that way. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, Still act interested in the role that you're applying for, well, please. I think that, and then another thing you kind of touched on is using one job as a stepping stone to the other one. Like talking about like, oh, I really want to do this, and essentially, but you should be focused on the thing because all that's going to do is create another spot that you both would have to try to fill again. Yeah, yeah so I think for that, um, also, you know, we get it, and you probably heard it from other people too, just getting your foot in the door is the most important thing. Yeah. But that's not great when you're the hiring manager and a potential employee that you're interviewing with is like, oh, this is just a foot in the door because I want to go to a different department. It's kind of like, we're going to hire you and spend months training you and then you're going to leave. Mm -hmm. No thanks. You want someone that actually wants to be here. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's again that sense of like, it's all about how you deliver the information. Where like, if you're applying for a general like world builder position and you're like, long term, I really want to do like, environmental art it's like okay those i see the connection and like the growth there and like how those connect um and so like being able to say that is one thing but being like oh i'm gonna apply for this world builder position but i actually want to like be a narrative be a narrative or yeah like be a programmer it's like then why are you doing art if you're interested in this other thing mm -hmm. so it's that that's kind of where it's it gets a little bit harder I think one exception to that rule would be QA because For sure. in particular here at Obsidian, and we'll announce it during the process too, that you know a lot of our folks started off in QA and grew into different departments because it's a great learning position where you interact with multiple departments. Like our CEO, our studio head um, started in QA. Our yeah, Mikey came from QA, yeah, he's my boss, director of communications. Yeah, so plenty of people have come, oh, I'm the one being eaten. Um, <laughs> plenty of folks have come, and so that's something that we'll talk about during the actual interview itself. And we're giving you permission to say like, feel free to let us know like what you'd like to run to. But also, you know, QA is a career too. We have QA leads. Mm -hmm. and folks have, you know, enjoyed the QA aspect of it. So for that one, I guess it's the one exception of like, yeah, you don't Yeah. I feel like it's, it's kind of one of those things where you can talk about career aspirations and be like, oh, like eventually I'd love to learn more about this thing. Yeah. But if you're interviewing and you're like, yeah, I, I just want to get this job so that I can transfer over into a different department. Exactly. Like, okay, that sucks. <laughs> We're doing more digital interviews. Um, do you, like, is there an expectation for people to be like dressed up or anything or no. like, what are some tips for digital interviews that uh, folks might need to know about? Test your software before you get on the call. Please. Make sure things work. Uh, I 
so I actually send out most of the emails that say like, hey, here's when your interview is going to be. Oh my God. And I, it is literally part of my so template for that email mm -hmm. now that I say, hey, we use Microsoft Teams. If you've never used Teams before, please make sure to test it and try it out and make sure you understand like the software works properly on your computer. Because um, that, more than anything, will just save time where uh, if it's we're organized. taking the first five or 10 minutes of the call to oh figure out like software issues. Mm -hmm. No, uh, I that's, tried. That's okay. That's, that's time that you could be like talking to the team and actually having the interview itself. Yeah, and the other thing is, you're not only <laughs> kind of taking away your time, you're taking away the time from all these other people exactly. that are doing a lot of, they're all, everyone is very busy at the studio. And so that time is taken, and then it's kind of a, uh, not like a, I won't speak for you all, but to me it feels like kind of a tick against you a little bit. It, we understand that tech issues will arise. Yes. Yeah. So it's not going to be terrible, but also just like, it. Yeah, it's just better. It, to it's just like it. a preparation yeah. thing, yeah. right? Oh, and then you asked about not to do's. Yeah, let's some not to do's. Um, I'm trying to think. I mean, like, I mean, I guess it's situational. I, yeah, I think obviously, like, is this in a call with a recruiter or in a no, call? This is this is the like, interview. Like I, think, the I think just generally speaking, though, I try to spin things positively if possible. I know that it's very easy, especially. If, I'm saying in this context of somebody that is already in a job, but also if you had like a bad group project, for example. Don't just rag don't on. Don't rag on your past teammates I or would, yeah. company repeatedly and be like, oh, I ended up having to pick up all the slack, so I ended up doing everything. Mm -hmm. Like here's, so, and this is, this is, I think especially true in game dev because it's a surprisingly small world where like, if you kind of shit on a team in your interview. It's our language. Oh no, we can curse this. <laughs> Damn it. I'm kidding. Uh, the, the likelihood that the person that you're talking to either knows or like first or second, second degree knows someone who's on the team that you're talking about is pretty high. But also just in general is like it doesn't come off as someone that you want to spend a lot of time around if you show up in a call and you're like, yeah, my old team was so bad and like everyone, I always had to pick up everyone else's slack and blah, 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 and just like complaining. You can talk about negative aspects of your job. Don't Would it be better to phrase it like, oh, you know, like there were some communication issues, yeah. which then like. Being able to recognize issues mm -hmm. without just like talking about it as like, oh, it's just the worst thing and the worst people is like, it's very possible to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see through, drama never wins. Exactly. That is exactly correct. Can I just, did Shredder just summon a video game character? Yes. Who then She's, also has supernatural abilities and to summon other video game She's characters? summoning Toka and Razar from the Ninja Turtles 2 movie. Are they creating life? Yes. But we don't ask too many questions about that. Okay. Well, That's beyond did my pay grade. Did you farted on? Uh, burped. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's just slightly better. Yeah, I mean, sort of. It, mm, I think they're both pretty gross. Oh, for sure. Now I'm wondering. But I would definitely rather be burped on than farted on. Yeah, I personally. think that's probably true. I agree. Thank you, Josh and Sarah. This yeah. was a lot of fun. Thank you, everybody, for being patient while we worked out the technical issues. Uh, I hope that we were able to answer your questions and give you some insight at the process and maybe some helpful tips for, um, you know, your future endeavors. And like we said, if you don't get it the first time, keep trying. Yes. I got rejected so many times in the games industry. Oh, yeah. So many times. Absolutely. So, you know, just, just keep at it. Keep plugging away. Um, yeah. So uh, thanks again. Thanks for the chids. And thanks. Thanks for the chids. Yeah, well, thanks for the donations for the chids. Next time, donate $75 so I can get a sick temp tattoo. <laughs> you got yeah, it. Come on. <laughs> See you guys later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Obsidian sign off. Um, <laughs> Obsidian out. <laughs> Obsidian out. <laughs> also, make sure to follow. Tell your friends about us. We've got a lot more fun guests coming up with more insight into but the we industry. we were the most fun. You guys are pretty awesome. We're the we're the best fun. Best fun. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.